I believe that everyone has at least one great story that only they can tell. My best story is dedicated to discovering these tales and releasing them into the wild, one guest at a time. I'm Travis Tidmore. Join me as I discover Billy Merritt's best story. Billy, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Travis? Thanks for having me. Doing good. Well, thanks for being on. Yeah. So what is your backstory? Backstory is uh, like, where do I come from? How do I yeah. exist? Or uh, I grew up in Florida, uh, lived in Miami until I was in sixth grade, then Gainesville, Florida, which is home of the University of Florida. So I grew up kind of in a college town. So that was a nice, homey, all American feel. Uh, uh, slowly got into acting and theater, I would say into my late twenties and then finally moved up to New York, uh, okay. in the nineties, uh, and then discovered improv and, uh, worked with the Upright Citizen Brigade Theater when they first started, before they even had a theater, uh, okay. started playing with them, playing like, uh, performing at their theater, uh, and then that developed a group called The Swarm and we were... Uh, I've been with that group. We've been together for over 20 years, uh, playing together. So it was like, we have comedy compatriots. We're good friends. Uh, moved out to LA about 12 years ago. Uh, and I have another group here called the smokes. It always starts, whatever group I play with has to start with an S. Uh, and I still teach, act, perform, whatever I can do, uh, out here in LA. That brings me up to date. (laughs) <laughs> okay. And you've been on some TV shows people may have seen you on, correct? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, most recently, uh, I did a show, on, I don't know if anybody knows this, with Rob Riggle called uh, Rob Riggle Ski Master Academy. I think I came out last year on Crackle, uh, so okay. maybe nobody knows that. Uh, <laughs> but I've done all the Parks and Recs and uh, Reno 911s, uh, uh, awesome. uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I started I actually, out in New York, yeah. We, I started my out, family is watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, so we actually, I think, saw your episode uh, last week sometime. Oh, yeah. Uh, in that picture, in that office, there are 17 birds, because uh, really? my character's a bird, and I was amazed yeah. uh, uh, that production design spent that much time on a very small scene <laughs> and hid 17 birds on that set. I'll have to go back and look for that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, Billy, what is your best story? My best story. Uh, uh, When you asked me, I kind of reviewed a bunch of stuff and I've got a series of stories. I think the most interesting time uh, uh, that's non-actorly or non-business, you know, although it's a little bit of business, would be my time in New York in the East Village in the uh, mid to late 90s. Uh, uh, I think those are interesting times for me in my life and for the East Village because it was just when uh, <clears throat> the um, renter strike happened. The whole show Rent was based on that time uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, in New York with the big, uh, uh, oh, what were they called? The uh, uh, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. What are uh, people who homes Squatter? not homesteaders? Squatters, the squatter Squatters. riots. Yeah. The squatter riots in the East Village in the mid 90s when Giuliani took over and started kicking all these people out of the East Village. Uh, I lived there at that time in an apartment uh, that uh, uh, was, I, I think the rent was literally $725 a month. It was a one bedroom a shotgun shack, which is just one long room chopped up into living room, bedroom, kitchen, bathroom. Uh, and the uh, bathroom didn't have a sink. Uh, obviously, 50 years ago, the bathroom was the kitchen. It was all one thing. It's been chopped up. So holes in the walls, exposed wiring, just as uh, uh, East Villagey as you can get. Uh, that same yeah. building and that same apartment, a friend of mine moved in there five years ago, and she spent $1.3 million on her apartment there uh so they must have upgraded (laughs) just a little Uh, you'd hope yeah um at that time i was married uh uh so it's a marriage story 
And it's uh, a story of our first fight. We are now divorced. Uh, so it was the beginning of many fights. Uh, it's not a bad divorce whatsoever. We're totally fine. Uh, we support each other and all that stuff. But uh, they were trying times because we were poor living in the East Village together. Uh, yeah. Artists uh, doing living the artist way, uh, if you will. So those were fun, innocent times. Uh, uh, at that time, uh, I think it was 97, 96, 97, uh, we were just getting started with uh, comedy and improv, and I was with, I think it was the beginning of that group I just talked about, The Swarm. Uh, we were okay. rehearsing some sort of show, uh, uh, and I was working full-time as a bartender, trying to make whatever money I could. That's a whole other set of stories, bartending in Manhattan. <laughs> uh, uh, my wife was, at that time, going to school and gainfully unemployed uh, that was her goal. Uh, uh, so the pressure, we were very poor. The pressure was kind of on me at the time, although she was making money too. I shouldn't say that, but it was on me. Uh, uh, we were very poor at the time. We were just struggling, struggling actors, trying to get along. Uh, 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 and we had a series of shows coming up that we were rehearsing for. So there's a lot of stress and a lot of pressure uh, within that week. Now, uh, that week that I'm talking about, we only had so much money between us to, uh, <laughs> to eat. Uh, yeah. We had like $35, $40 that we uh, kept in a little jar on the mantelpiece. Uh, and that would be for food or whatever uh, for the week. We would make, uh, I mean, that was back in the ramen days and stuff like that, yeah. whatever you could eat. Uh, uh, um, and I remember going to work. I was working that day and I came back. Uh, and it was before I had rehearsal that night and I looked up on the mantle and all the money was gone. Uh, I was like, what, what, what happened? Uh, where is all that money? Uh, uh, now little backstory, uh, uh, on my uh, wife at the time, ex-wife, uh, she's a witch, uh, a practicing witch. Uh, she has her own coven that she was running, uh, uh named after, I think some Italian book called Strega Nona or something like that. Uh, uh, basically, uh, they were the good witches of the East Village, as I like to put it. Uh, your Stevie Nicks uh, granola crunching hippie witches. Uh, right. There was another coven of witches in the East Village, which would be your Aleister Crowley gothic dark lace witches. Uh, and they did not get along. Uh, uh, talk about the real housewives, the real witches of the East Village. Uh, 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 but instead of pulling spells on each other, they just talked behind each other's back at the dog park. So uh, it was wonderful. It was great. Uh, when I look back on it, I think, what a wonderful time to be around and listening to all these arguments. And she said, what? That's not even an incantation uh, going back and forth. Uh, so with that backstory, back to where I am at the mantelpiece looking for the money, but there's a candle up there. And uh, my wife said, uh, I use the money because I know you have a big show with uh, managers coming and you want to get signed. So I use the money on this spell candle. Uh, it's a, uh, a, a positive spells, positive affirmation candle that she got at the witch store. Uh, in the East Village, which there are several of. <laughs> Not the Santeria store, but the witch store. Uh, okay. They also sell healthy dog food. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so she bought a very success-oriented spell candle. Now, if you've ever been to uh, any bodegas in uh, New York, you see these little 99-cent candles with uh, the Mother Mary, the Virgin Mary yeah. on it. That's what it yeah. looked like. Uh, it looked like that candle, <laughs> except in it were, uh, was glitter. And I assume a spell of some sort. I wasn't too sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that was the candle. And it was in the middle of the mantle pl place instead of our money. Uh, and I said, so wait, how much money did you spend on that? She says, I spent all our, it was $35 for the kit. What? Well, it's a success spell. Uh, and that was the beginning. That was our first argument about uh, realistic <laughs> expectations of money. And uh, I look back on it now and I realized on her side, it was me not believing in her, uh, not believing in uh, her belief system. You know, yeah. uh, I was only thinking of, the money and food and what's going on right now. And I just came home from work and I was haggard and I had to go off to a rehearsal and I was like, you did what? And uh, it just escalated to the point where I said something uh, very mean. 
And I said, fuck you and fuck your magic. And I stormed out. Uh, uh, I should get that tattoo. Uh, uh, <laughs> that was the, yeah. we were married for eight years. And I would say out of the eight, seven and a half years were lovely. Uh, uh, but that was the first time that I said something. No, I, I'm sure I said many negative things. But that was the first time <laughs> I felt uh, yeah. that was a negative statement in our relationship. And you don't say things like that. Uh, you don't say fuck you to your significant other. And you don't say fuck your magic, uh, whether it's whatever religion or magic they believe in. Uh, that's yeah. not fair. But I stormed out. I was angry and I was just uh, just bulldozing to go to rehearsal so pissed off. While I was thinking about it, my head was down. I was on 14th Street because our apartment was on 14th Street. I was cross crossing Avenue A. And I was just looking down and thinking about what the fuck am why am I, I, I got, I'm going to have to get another job. I'm going to have to, I got hit by a car. Right at that moment, I got hit by a white uh, a Toyota, uh, it was a Celica, uh, something, I think it was a, it was a small white car. Yeah. Uh, uh, I wasn't severely injured. I rolled over the hood and then tumbled onto loose gravel, sand, puddly muck that's in the corner of all the streets in New York, that magic yeah. water, that's uh, <laughs> puddle water that's all over the place. So I was just coated on one side. My legs were all scraped up, but just mud, bits of glass and gravel were all in me. And I just uh, took a break, calm down. I gotta go home. I just gotta go home and make, make this right. Uh, uh, or whatever, I was just so pissed off. I was defeated, I got beat up. Uh, so I, I limped home, uh, it was a four floor walk up, finally cut me into the house. Uh, and my wife looks at me and says, what happened? And I said, I got hit by the car. And she goes, I blew out the candle. So magic one, uh, uh, she blew yeah. out my success candle. I got hit by a car. Uh, and that was, you. yeah, I, I learned that, uh, don't say fuck your magic. And apparently magic is true. Uh, uh, I will say the show sucked, but that doesn't matter. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, that was one of those great little moments that, uh, uh, I might be divorced now, but I cherish my times, uh, yeah. being married and being in the East village. Cause they were trying times, but probably the funnest times and the times that you kind of develop who you are, you know, your yeah. philosophy got developed there. That's and that's story. my story. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That was excellent. No, um, thank you. Where can people find you if they're, they want to look up more of you? Uh, well, I'm online uh, on all the social medias, except for TikTok, uh, uh, <laughs> Twitter, uh, BillyMerritt.com, uh, Facebook, just Billy Merritt. Uh, uh, I'm teaching classes online if you're interested in improv. I wrote a book called Pirates, Robots, Ninjas, and Improv Fable uh, with Will Hines. Uh, and I'm teaching classes based on that book. Uh, so if you go on to Facebook or uh, Instagram or anything like that and look up my name, uh, you'll find all that stuff there. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being a guest. It was great having Absolutely. you Absolutely. Travis, thank you so much for having me. No problem. Uh, thank you. Good luck and make your magic be blessed. Well, thank you. And to you. So be it. I want to thank Billy Merritt for coming on and telling us his story. As always, new episodes drop right here every Tuesday and Thursday. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Our title music is Red, White, Black, and Blue by Peg and the Rejected. If you have a story you'd like to tell, hit us up on our Facebook page, over on Twitter at My Best Story Show, or via email at mybeststorypodcast at gmail.com. Until next time. Go live your best story.